season two, episode one, baby. Hello world, and welcome back to A Little About A Lot. We're so excited to be back. This is season two of our podcast. Thank you for everyone who supported season one so bad and asked for season two to come back. We're back. I know, I'm so excited. I never thought that we'd have a podcast and then we'd have a podcast that people were like, why did you stop doing it? (laughs) And wanted it back so badly. And a fun addition to this season is we are now recording it on video as well. Wow, this was like quite the discussion because I was like, I like the podcast because I can be in my own little world and the internet doesn't have to see me. I can, they can just hear me. But um, I think it just makes a lot of sense. We can reach a bigger audience. Uh, some people are on YouTube. Some people are on the podcasting apps. But this way, you yeah, get us everywhere. Um, honestly, the video is not too glamorous. Hi, video viewers. Um, but it's here, it's available, and it's on our vlog channel called The Sorry Life. Yeah, if you somehow found us through podcasting only, you can go check it out to see what we look like, see what our space looks like, where we've been broadcasting from. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) And and if you um, usually tune into The Sorry Girls or The Sorry Life and you didn't know we have a podcast, well, now you know. And um, we would really appreciate it if you would still head on over to the podcast app of your choice and subscribe just so that you're kind of aware and updated there and this is the first time we're trying the video so I think it's gonna stay but yeah because I know there's a lot of people even myself included that like watching things on YouTube even if it's for audio only Mm -hmm. because you're already there on the app it's convenient and it's just like background noise it's like a longer YouTube video which is great sometimes (laughs) so I hope that this goes out to you guys that maybe like that format as well yeah so for those of you that haven't listened to the podcast before, I am Kelsey. And my name is Becky. And we are also known as the Sorry Girls on the internet. Yeah, this podcast is honestly us just like chatting about things going on in our, our lives, our thoughts on a ton of different topics, which is why it's called A Little About A Lot. We discuss like almost everything, <laughs> what's going on in our world, what's going on in the world as well. We respond to emails. So segue to what's our email? Uh, podcast at the sorrygirls.com. If you have any questions about anything we talk about or just questions about literally anything, you can email us and we typically respond to some emails in every podcast episode. Yeah, so we have a couple of different like segments that season two is going to include. There's things that we want to touch on every single episode and um, one of them is going to be emails and we're probably going to put those towards the end so make sure you listen to the end not this episode i'll straight up say that there's no (laughs) emails in this episode (laughs) but in the future listen to the end to see if um you've written in if we discuss your email Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so um should we just jump into where the frick have you been yeah we've been up to a lot of things we've been honestly so busy which is why the season two of the podcast has taken a while to come back um, but maybe if you guys only listen to the podcast and want to know what happened in between those two seasons, or the first season and now, we can fill you in. Yeah, I think I was my own pet peeve by not doing something that we said we would do, which was bring the podcast back sooner. But I think we were just, yeah, we wanted to take our time. Also, no need to rush things too, right? Yeah, exactly. We wanted to make sure it was right. And we had all the thoughts for the different episodes all nailed down. And now we kind of do. So we're here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's jump into what has happened in these last couple months. Um, good thing Daniela wrote it down for me because how the heck am I going to remember what happened in the last couple months? It has gone by fast. Mm-hmm. Like liquidy, li- liquidy, <laughs> lickety, lickety. Why is that a saying? I don't lickety know. Lickety split. Find that out. Or hey, email us because somebody knows. <laughs> Somebody's gonna. We're gonna get an email next week. What is the reasoning behind liquidy split it's not liquidy. lickety 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 <laughs> ew both are gross <laughs> <laughs> i'm banning that saying in our office um speaking of our office we hired a new editor mm-hmm, which is very exciting a lot of you guys were very concerned that justin was leaving mm-hmm. which i appreciate that i'm sure he appreciates that it's very sweet but no the reason we hired a new editor is because we love justin so much and he can't do everything because we are putting out so much content We're doing bigger videos, longer videos, more intense videos that require longer editing hours and to keep up that schedule and the vlog channel, which we have, and all the other fun things like travel, which we can discuss in a bit, it was, there was no time for him to do it all. Yeah. And also I wanted to have something that was really important to me was Justin has such an amazing, unique um, voice and editing style. And I feel like we were using freelancers and 
as amazing as the freelancers were, I feel like the style was getting lost. Mm -hmm. But this way, way by having somebody in house, um, first of all, um, our new editor, Nick, he gets the style just from the beginning. But being in house, they can really share those resources and really make sure that the Story Girl style is consistent. Plus, it's very hard to explain over literal text emails like, put this meme in there or like cut and use this really funny like song that we like. It's hard to explain. It's so much easier to show somebody or be with them at their computer to explain it. Yeah. So that was another benefit. We wanted someone like physically in the office. And off of that note, I find it so interesting that so many careers nowadays, people are like, oh, you can work from home. We're living in a digital world. You don't need to like be in an office and that's going to open up opportunities for a lot of different people around the world. But also I'm like, I want us all to be under one roof. I feel like we're so much more productive when we're together, we're sitting as a team, Mm -hmm. we can like bounce ideas off each other, we can review cuts in-house. And I feel like that goes against the entire society right now, the way, the direction that society is going. We're like, no, we need an office and we need to be together. And people are like, no, you can work from home, you're a YouTuber, you don't have a normal nine to five job. And I'm like, yeah, I do. (laughs) We try to at least. Yeah, that's how we stay sane. We actually, a, um, a news outlet like reached out to us recently and they're like, we're doing a story about like unique careers, people that don't have nine to fives. And I was like, cool, well, I think our job is pretty unique, but we definitely have a nine to five <laughs> job. So can we still be a part of the article? P.S. haven't heard back, so I don't know. <laughs> TBD, we'll update you guys on that once we know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, overall, he's been great. How many months has he been with us? Like one like only i think more he started in may after he graduated wow this is just what's been happening to this summer it's been going by so fast disgustingly quick (laughs) it's really bad (laughs) but i've got a lot done so that's good but yeah he's been great amazing awesome addition to the team hasn't been in too many vlogs yet but i know i I, we actually didn't officially introduce him i was about to one day and he was like can we not because i think he was like really busy and i was like i'm gonna put a camera in your face and he's like (laughs) not yet so uh nick coming soon to the vlog so make sure you guys are well i guess you might be subscribed to the sorry girls this is confusing because we put this on the the youtubes now (laughs) anyways Uh, okay so what else happened this list also is in no particular order we were just like brain dumping with daniela our podcast producer about what happened so i think this is the order is like what my brain thought of (laughs) (laughs) um but hey you went on a trip that's exciting where'd you go oh i went to ireland Mm -hmm. and you know what's really funny about social media is like I I feel like it just stopped, but for the longest time I had people asking me, they're like, how was Ireland? You just got back from Ireland. I was like, no, honey, I'm still posting the photos from Ireland, but I definitely got back from Ireland like two months ago. I know. I went at the end of May and I think like I am Ireland and Ireland is me. <laughs> like when I was there, I was like, oh yeah, this is the climate. This is the climate that Kelsey likes because it just like wasn't too hot, wasn't too cold. I think my skin just looked better there. I don't know what was going on, but um, I really, really loved Ireland. And if you guys get the chance, I encourage you to uh, make the trip. It definitely is a little bit expensive, but there are two full Ireland vlogs on our vlog channel, The Story Life, that um, will tell you some tips and tricks for traveling Ireland and what to see, what to do. Yeah, you talked about where you stayed, right? Was it hotels, Airbnbs? Mostly Airbnbs, except for in the city and also with some fam, but... um, yeah, honestly, the Airbnb experience like made the trip because you're just in these super unique places that you normally wouldn't get to stay. And we booked, we pretty much booked our trip based on, oh, that's an affordable, cute looking Airbnb. Let's go to that location. Like I wasn't like, let's go to that location. I was like, let's go to that Airbnb. <laughs> uh, Sometimes that's harder to find, honestly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, what's more important to me? It, Ireland's beautiful. It's all gonna be beautiful. So um, we kind of let Airbnb lead the way on that, mm-hmm. not sponsored, but just like very much in love with the brand. Um, so yeah, we found some adorable places. That's awesome. What was your favorite part of the trip? Um, probably just like anything along the shoreline. And I mean, good news for us Canadians. I've heard that the Canadian coast is specifically Northeast, <laughs> East coast. Does anybody else do that? They have to like point. Um, I still do it all the time. I'm like going to the subway and I'm like, am I going which way? I don't know. (laughs) Um, Yeah, specifically the East Coast of Canada, I feel like is very similar. So I've heard to Ireland, Um, you know, just green cliffs. They should share the same ocean, right? Yeah, they're like both right there. Um, So yeah, you don't even have to leave your own country to get a little 
taste of Ireland. Wow. I know. And my family is going out to Newfoundland and um, Nova Scotia this September. But I think I'm going to stay back just because, like, saving money for a house, which we can get into. That's on the list. (sighs) Oh, baby. Oh, baby. (laughs) Okay, before we get to that, let's talk about some fun stuff that we did as a team. Yeah, um, the we brought the whole team to Disneyland. Yes. Well, and the reason we were at Disney is because we were going as a team to VidCon, which is even crazier almost. I know. the first year I went to VidCon, like, it's very expensive to go. We don't get free tickets for everybody like a lot of people do. Um and I was like, the, I would love to bring a team one day, but it was just like figuring out the logistics and how to actually pay for that. Mm-hmm. That's like, that's crazy. It just feels like a dream that might never happen. But then it got to happen this year, which is so fun. Yeah, it is a lot, though. Like, I'm like, do I want to go back yet next year? I don't even know. I know you have to mentally prepare yourself. It's like three, four days of like nonstop. Something's happening every hour of the day. Yeah, I was thinking about this. Like, we do learn a lot and it is fun and all that jazz but I was like I feel like you don't need to go every single year it's one of those things where you can kind of like alternate it like Mm -hmm. maybe you and I can go every year and just like make it really short and like don't destroy ourselves (laughs) for the week Mm -hmm. but imagine we did like we always do like a team thing every year but it's not always VidCon like sometimes it's VidCon sometimes it's like we're going to Prince Edward County bitches am I allowed to swear (laughs) my mom says I swear too much on the podcast and I'm like I feel like we edit it. You don't don't even know. (laughs) That's funny. Love you, mom. But yeah, no, Disney was so fun too because we were just happy to be in Anaheim anyway, so it just made sense. Disney was close. Mm -hmm. It's so fun. Like, it doesn't matter how old you get. I love Disney. It's so fun. Have you heard about these articles? These articles that the mamas are writing. Oh, yeah. They're writing articles about how millennials shouldn't be going to Disneyland. Because we're ruining it? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> because the lineup for the pretzels for the pretzels was too long. What, because her children are more important than my fun time at Disneyland? Exactly. Like, come on. It's we grew up with Disney too. You know, guess who was enjoying Disney before your children? Us. Us. <laughs> and she was probably enjoying Disney before us, but point of it is. Disney's for everyone. Yeah, that's crazy. I think that was most people's consensus, but... But, like, everybody knows Disneyland is busy. Yeah. It's always been busy. I think all we can encourage is just open more Disneylands. (laughs) We need a Disneyland Canada. Disney Canada, please come. Disney North? Like, what would be a good name for Disneyland Canada? Disney A? (laughs) Yes, I like that. Disney Land. Mm-hmm. Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, though. I, I don't like that. I know. Mom blogs. You gotta love them. Or not. <laughs> you gotta love them. <laughs> Hopefully that does not represent most moms. All right. Something on a more recent note that happened, which is really exciting, mm-hmm. is we got to go back on Strahan and Sarah, mm. which is a daytime show on ABC. Yeah. It's filmed in New York, which is very exciting for us because getting on U.S. television is like a big deal because we are from Canada. (laughs) So it's really cool to be, you know, recognized by the U.S., which is obviously a major player in all sorts of media. Um, So we were on that show. How many? How long ago was the first time we got it? I think it it was in either January or March. I was looking this up recently because I am writing a funding application and I had to like talk about all the amazing things we've done. So, um, I could talk more about that. But it was either January or March. I forget the exact date. But it was a little while ago. Like half a year ago then? Yeah. Um, yes. And then, like, you never know if it really went well or if they actually liked having you on. But then they were like, we had so fun, so much fun. Like, come back again. And that was crazy. Yeah. Because, like, now I'm just like, yo, we're regulars. We've done four episodes now. I know. Like, that's, like, pretty good. It's pretty good. That's pretty good. Also, shout out to Bianca, um, the producer at Stray Hand and Sarah, that I think she's probably one of the main reasons why we keep getting yes. asked back because she's our little cheerleader over there. So Yes. Also, Leslie, who does art department on the show, she gets our DIYs so well. Yeah. She, like, helps us step them out so they're ready to go when we go on the show, and she does them, like, to a T. Yeah. Also, so I learned things from her because she's just – she's been in the industry for so long, mm-hmm. like, in the film art department world. So we were actually um, me- gluing mirror – and she told us about the specific glue you're supposed to u- use. It's called Mir Mastic mm-hmm. or Mastic. 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 And it just, I don't know if you guys have ever 
been to a place where they like glue the mirror on the wall and you'll kind of see the outline of the glue streak <laughs> and that's because they use the wrong type of adhesive and that means it's corroding the back of the mirror. Yeah. So rear mastic makes sure that um, when it'll stick to wherever you're trying to put the mirror, but it won't corrode the mirror backing. So now we all know. Thank you, uh, Leslie from Strahan and Sarah, Sarah Art Department. <laughs> um, and you're just... Just got to keep learning. Soak yeah. it up, baby. You guys are great. You guys are great. That was so fun. So this time when we were on, we just shot two episodes. Both of them were pre-taped. I mean, they still are in a way live because they don't want to edit them, really. Yeah. So you do kind of have to do it all in one take, even though it's not like directly being shown on TVs as you say it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so the first episode we did, they actually shot in Times Square which was crazy yeah when they said on the phone she's like okay so we're gonna set up the diy we're actually gonna do it outside because it's like summer and it's a nice day and we're gonna do it in times square i was like wait what are you kidding me like, like the times square like our diy was set up in times square i didn't even know that like i mean obviously they're a huge network but they would have the power to like shut down that much of times square to put in this giant patch of fake grass and put up a white picket fence <laughs> With picnic tables, just because they needed it for, like, this five minutes of their show. And a tree. Yeah, it was crazy. I know. We were even like, how do you make this happen? She's like, we, I think because they're, like, in that area and because they're a TV network, they are allowed to do that. Like, whenever they want, they just kind of need to, like, still get clearance and Mm -hmm. let a certain somebody know. But (laughs) that's just something they can do. I don't know. That was pretty unreal, and I felt very cool and so validated cool. i was like wow i know i remember the first time i went to new york like imagine if me then knew what was coming that'd be wild the million times you've been to times square mm-hmm. if you're like actually one day i'm gonna be standing right here and i'm gonna be like telling a million or more people how to make a diy yep that's that happened <laughs> yes that happened and then the second episode was they're putting in part of a wedding week they're doing yeah so we recreated some of the DIYs that I actually did for my wedding, mm-hmm. showed people how to do them as well. This was shot inside, which was nicer, that AC blush. <laughs> yeah, that was a great experience. I hope we get to go back soon. Mm-hmm. Plus, Kiki Palmer is now a third um, host on that show. Yeah. So meeting her was crazy, too, because like I, I know who she is the most out of both Sarah and Michael. Yeah. So that was wild to get to meet her as like not even like a fan or anything. It's just like we are all on the show together. We're all yeah. like respected for our own things. It was really <gasps> cool. That's so true. I know, right? Also, I went to the movies last night and I saw um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Holy crap. Such a good movie. Uh, Quentin Tarantino. Whew. Also, Leo and Brad Pitt. Like, not hard on the eyes at all. Oh, is this why you're talking about Leo? Because Kiki? No, Sorry. I was my segue was that before the movie there was a trailer <laughs> for Hustler Hustlin, Hustlin yeah, oh yeah that movie with Jennifer uh, Lopez mm-hmm. and Cardi B I believe mm-hmm. yep and Kiki's in it too oh that's fun yeah I was like kind of offended that my boyfriend didn't know who Kiki was though really yeah I was I'm like surprised. oh Kiki's in this and he's like who's Kiki I was like I just DIY'd with her on Straight Hand and Sarah in Times Square. We made a pinata, like, come on. And he's like, right. And I'm like, cool. Whatever. That's so cool. Um, but what I was referencing is when we did the wedding DIYs with yeah. her, I, they asked me, like, come up with the wedding invitations. And I was like, I don't know what, because certain things can be shown on TV, you know, that are, like, TV safe. You ever see, like, a phone number in a movie and it's, like, 555. Five, five. Yeah, always the same, like, area code because it's what's allowed. Yeah. Um. So I said, I don't know what to write on these invitations, like, what address to put, what names to put, like, what is okay for tv yeah so they're like okay don't worry we'll make it for you like we'll write up the the type for it yeah and then we get to the show and their wedding invitations are for the wedding of kiki palmer and leo dicaprio (laughs) (laughs) which is kind of everything and i love it like i love they didn't go with like you know jane doe or whatever like they made it funny oh they made it funny also sarah like she was reading the invitation remember Mm -hmm. and she was like oh kiki who's Leonardo, like, she didn't realize that it was, like, the Leonardo. Yeah. Because their last names were written smaller. Anyways, that's enough about us in our New York adventures. If you guys want to know more about any of this stuff, I'm sure all of it appeared in various vlogs. It definitely appeared in various vlogs, so <laughs> add the story life. Well, and since we're on YouTube for half of this, maybe half of you are watching this on YouTube, you can subscribe right here to The Sorry Life. 
And the best thing about that is, too, we have the description now that we can post any links before, like, mm-hmm. that we're talking about. Before, we had them up on our blog, which we may still do. We might still have blog posts about the podcast yeah. episodes. But even better, if you're already on YouTube, right in the description, there'll be links to anything that we have in a reference this yeah. time in any future podcasts. Well, we have more to dive into, but I think we're going to take this time for a quick break. BRB. And we're back, and we thought of one more New York thing that we're going to squeeze in here before we continue on. Yes, but it was a different time, though. Yeah, this was a different, this was, I forget when. Earlier. <laughs> yeah, earlier. But this was Brandcast, which, if you guys don't know, Brandcast slash Creator Summit uh, is a, um, like, YouTube put on event. It's totally private, totally invite only, um, and they invite some of the top creators, mostly in, like, North America. Mm-hmm. Um but it's a super exclusive event that we were invited to for the first time in our YouTube career. I'm sure you guys have seen vlogs from previous years of like your fave creators who have gone. I've seen them too. Mm -hmm. And it was crazy this year to actually be invited as well. Like I feel like we were actually probably one of the smaller channels, if not smallest channels at Creator Summit, which was really cool to be like recognized for the work we do. Yeah. To be like, Someone who arranges this must have thought it was like worthy enough or on par with everyone else who got invited to invite us as well. Yeah. Which was so cool. I think, um, I mean, I think we are invited to events like that, even though we might not be a huge channel, is because we are such hard workers and we are so dedicated to what we do. Yeah. And I, I think we're friends of YouTube too. Like, we have a partner manager, um, and we're always asking, like, what can we do more of? Like, what new features can we try out for you? Like, is there anything, like, in beta mode that we can test out? Yeah. Like, we want to be, like, the best on YouTube, like, the best for YouTube that we can be. Yeah. We don't – yeah. I feel like – and we and we operate like a company i don't know there's like things that we do Mm -hmm. that set us apart differently than just our numbers yeah and also brandcast beside it being fun or creator summit beside it being fun uh, i learned a lot too which is really cool you know we're talking about vidcon maybe you don't need to go over here because there are a lot of things where it's like i already know that Mm -hmm. there's a lot of panels where it's like i don't need to go because we're doing more than that or we've already learned that right but creator summit they know everybody there is like pretty high up and they all have like companies they all have big teams like they don't need to explain like how to do a brand deal for the first time right yeah so everything that we learned there was like much more on our level which was really cool too yeah I think like the YouTube that reminds me of the YouTube space Mm -hmm. um I remember they used to have like different events and panels and stuff the YouTube space Toronto uh and we went to a couple of them but then we stopped going because we're like we kind of know this stuff Mm -hmm. but then we told them that hey some stuff that you guys are having panels on are is kind of like repetitive for us so then they started having different panels and panels only open to a certain subscriber account of mm-hmm. uh creator and that's where we learn things about like funding yeah and applying for funding so yeah. literally we are applying for funding um for a series that we want to get off the ground that would be posted on youtube and the only reason literally the only reason why that's happening is because we went to a youtube Uh, panel an event where they talked about hey here's how you can get some funding here's some different companies and organizations that offer funding Mm -hmm. and like connected us and it's a lot of work to fill out a funding application and write it it's like going to be 100 pages long but um it's really exciting yeah which is really cool so it's nice that youtube recognizes there's people in different stages of the creative process and you can't lump everyone together in one kind of like session you know Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is really cool and also it's good too that they have stuff for like lesser like smaller channels right because you can't assume that everybody knows a certain standard right yeah it's good to be helping small channels get off the ground too which i love so much Mm -hmm. yeah i think one one of the coolest takeaways from brandcast um they do like a big powerpoint keynote at the end of like what youtube is talking about this year and what they're focusing on and one of the big things is that the how-to category is the fastest growing category mm-hmm. and that they're really trying to push content in that category. And if you guys know us, we're a DIY channel. That's like what we do. Um, and it's so cool to feel like YouTube is recognizing this category is like important and it's content to push. So that was awesome. Yeah. That reminds me. I should put that in the funding application. Yes. All those like little tidbits that make the Sorry Girls DIY 
and our series idea as a whole sound like a good idea, mm-hmm. I have to like put it there. It's like I've never talked us up so much in my life. <laughs> I'm like, we are amazing. Give us money. <laughs> you got to do it sometimes. You yeah. got to do it. So you were starting to briefly mention this funding pitch that we're putting together. Do you want to tell people exactly kind of what that is? Yeah, um, I guess I won't tell, I won't share the idea. Because <laughs> like, <laughs> it's yes, a good one. it's a good one. We want to make it, um, we want to make it happen. But yeah, it's like, should I say the dollar amount? I mean, it's a publicly known, I guess. Um, we're applying for, should I even say the, the fund? Yeah. Is that like stirring up competition? Well, bring it on, guys. I'm going to make an amazing op- application. Um, but we are applying for the Bell Fund as well as another fund. Um, and you can get up to like 75% um, of your budget covered up to $200,000. Or your budget can be $200,000, 75%, so like $150,000. And this is for a television show that we want to produce. Well, not television, digital series. Yes. But it's going to look and feel like a, a TV show. Um, it's uh, like a... Like a web series. Yeah, a web series. And it would be on YouTube. And we're so excited because um, we've never been able to tackle something like this before. We have series on our channel and um, we just always do them ourselves. <laughs> and our crew is crazy small and we're always wearing multiple hats mm-hmm. and the producer is also recording sound who's also taking photos and me and you are like painting shelves and stressing out. Um, but with some funding, we can make more episodes, we can do bigger projects, um, the quality is going to be higher and overall the stress level is going to be lower. And we will be able to keep up our regular um, scheduled posting because we're not going to have to do like every single thing. Like you and I, usually we produce, usually we're our department, Mm -hmm. but um, with some funding and with a team, we'll still be doing those things, but we won't be doing 100% of them. Yeah. Plus it'd be so fun to like take all this knowledge and skills that we have as a team and like make something that's the best that we can do and like the best that we can make like how cool would that be you guys always say in comments of like style selected it's like oh this feels like an HGTV show which is really cool but imagine and like that wasn't the intention when we were doing that it was like oh let's just try and make something that's a little more structured on YouTube yeah but imagine if we had the goal of like let's make something that really feels legit yeah and we put all of our efforts into it like how cool that could be yeah and I think that us creating a series can seri- seriously (laughs) open up the doors because we can possibly sell this web series to a streaming platform like Crave or Netflix or we could use this series that we make as an example of look we can do something like this give us even more money and we can make something even bigger and better and like try to be on other platforms I mean I'm I don't know about TV I feel like I'm kind of over TV (laughs) and I feel like our audience is kind of over TV but like Netflix and Crave or like Mm -hmm any of these streaming platforms, YouTube as well. Um, I think that's where we want to be and we just want to keep pushing ourselves and challenging ourselves to make bigger and better things. Yeah, and plus other production companies that do have these huge budgets have come to us before and said like we want to make something together, but we don't always like necessarily have the proof that we could do it. Like I know in my head that we could do it, we could pull Mm -hmm. it off and we'd be amazing hosts or we'd be amazing house reno people or whatever the concept is, but to actually have something that's like done and made all by ourselves kind of and with the help of funding as like physical proof like here's a show that we did Mm -hmm. like it'd be so good to just tell everyone like we can do this yeah and also we would have control Mm -hmm. we have a lot of people that do approach us and they're like come be on our show it'll it'll film for six months in the usa and you'll get paid like a portion like nothing compared to what we could make just staying at home and producing content for youtube i'm like why would we do that and then it's usually like it may or may not air. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. No right. guarantees for any of this stuff. Yeah. So you gotta be careful. He spent months of your life like filming something. Yeah. And it doesn't even go. Yeah. So that's why the fund, because then we can get the money to do something on our own and we own it and it can be ours. It can be our little baby. It would be. It already is my little baby. I'm incubating <laughs> the baby right now. It's a fetus. But <laughs> But it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Um yeah. But it's been amazing because um like you guys just filmed a video yesterday of mm-hmm. making over your sister-in-law's um, son's room. Son's room. So my nephew. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess you. That was like the short form. I just did the long <laughs> form version. Um, but I was like, guys, I need to work on this funding. Like, what can we do? And you guys are like, you guys, as in you, Claire and Daniela, 
uh, stepped up to, um, <laughs> you guys went ahead and did it. And I was like, cool, that's fine. You don't need me. I'm going to work on this. It's just like yeah. delegating and we can get this done and we're going to have money and it's going to be so exciting. I know. that, And I hope that the comments don't say anything about like, oh, where's Kelsey? Because like that happens sometimes too. It's like, oh, you guys don't film together anymore. Like You what, hate each other. What happened? And it's like, <laughs> it's because we have so many, like uh, we just discussed this list of all the things that have happened. Like we have so many things going on that if we can like divide and conquer on a lot of these things it makes it easier for everybody yeah so i mean the reason you're getting so many videos sometimes they're not together is because we can do things separately so hope you guys can appreciate that yeah <laughs> we're doing it because we want to keep posting content if we had to wait until we were together all the time that the times for that would be really slim sometimes mm -hmm. or nothing else would get done and we wouldn't get to go on trips we wouldn't get to be on tv shows we wouldn't get to apply to make really cool shows Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What else do we want to discuss? Um, Ooh, what's happening right now? So we talked about what did happen. We're going to talk about what's happening now in our futures. Funding applications. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, sure. Yeah, um, Segway. We are doing funding applications now, but what else is happening? Um, we are doing some room makeovers. Mm -hmm. um, we have a couple coming up. We, yeah, a lot of like big projects, which take up a lot of time, but I think they're going to be great and hopefully the payoff is going to be great. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, we are like getting into gear for dorm series. Mm -hmm. I think we want to do five episodes this year. We have only ever done three episodes. I think the first year we did like one or two, mm -hmm. right? And then we did um, three and then three. And then this year, it, they just, the dorms are so fun for us because we get to make over real students dorms um we get to be super creative because we're taking a space that you can't paint that is as far as the bones go it's really hard to diy and you can't do a lot to the space you have to get really creative so that makes it really fun for us and so many people come up to us and say hi i love your channel i first found you when i was looking up decor and how to make over my dorm room like i feel like that's the number one thing people say to me Plus, there are they are our best performing videos, like by far. Yeah. So I have a question for you guys. You can either tweet us or email us, or if you're seeing this on YouTube, leave it in the comments. Is dorm series something that you'd be interested in, like all year round, or is it mostly back mm -hmm. to school season where it's most important? Because we try to to do so many all in like September, October <laughs> for back to school, and then we don't touch it again until the next fall season right it just seems the most makes the most sense to me because it's like oh back to school season but like what about after spring break like when you're coming back for second semester like is that something interesting for you guys yeah because it does perform so well like i have to assume people would like it almost always also sponsors come for me because i really would love to do uh like a usa dorm yes like ucla or nyu but like sure. right now we have a lot of dorms in Canada and more specifically Toronto that need to be done so uh we're just gonna drive to those and do them <laughs> but I would love to make it like more of a North America thing yeah but travel is expensive right yeah and if like this is always kind of the the like math you have to quick math in your head is that if videos overall are costing more than you're gonna make on AdSense or even sponsored videos then like what are you gonna do because you're gonna run your company into the ground right yep so we would love to travel and do these crazy makeovers like all the time, but we also can't be bankrupt. Ergo, no more videos. <laughs> Good math business <laughs> skills, Becky. I don't know any of the numbers, but quick math is like, does A plus B equals C? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Sometimes it's not for these four videos, but then it makes up for the next five. So then it's okay. You know, math, right? Do you like being a business owner or what? It's hard work. <laughs> I know. I know. On top of all the things that we're talking about doing, I'm just kind of like, and also how to run a business. I know. 101 because we need money for different things which speaking of expensive purchases in people's lives oh gosh don't get me started <laughs> guys i'm buying a house why why am i doing it well it's a good investment long oh, term in my opinion but the i the process is kind of a pain like you know it's bad when you literally want to throw this is what happens the process is so stressful that you throw money out and away because you want it to be over it, like in what way like you're like oh i'm bidding on this house i'm excited i want this house like i just want this to be over and then your real estate agent's like 
how much higher can you go? Like, they want more money. And then you're like, ah, let me just throw money at it so this can be over. <laughs> like, what is this world we're living in? But yes, I am house searching in Toronto. Um, I haven't spoken too much about it. You've seen it probably a little bit on the vlogs, but I'm looking for a home that um, I can make into two income properties so I can live in one, like, proper income property and um a separate apartment can be one that i rent out and mm-hmm. i want them to be both be nice um a lot of people have like just the basements are renovated but that's not going to help me cover my mortgage and that's the goal is to have the uh income property cover like pretty much all the mortgage yeah and this is to note that you're trying to get one in toronto too which is one of the craziest housing markets right yeah. now as well which is why it's so difficult I had friends actually that just bought a house, but much more north out of the city. Yeah. And when they were looking, she sent me a listing and she was like, oh, like, this is a house we kind of like. But like, I don't know. We'll see if it's there in a couple weeks. Maybe we'll go see it. And I was like, weeks? Because what I know from <gasps> Toronto is that yeah. like, if you see a house, you have to go get it or bid on it essentially like that day or yeah. in the next couple days or it's gone. But I know the, that's the luxury of smaller towns or farther towns out of the city is, you know, there's like always houses for sale and they're kind of always for sale and you can wait for weeks yeah that's like no one's in a rush to sell and no one's in a rush to buy yeah i mean i guess it does suck that the timeline is so quick in toronto but also maybe it's better that way right than mm-hmm. like oh just like dragging out the process mm-hmm. but yeah like i had to be like guys can i come in late to work this morning because literally houses went up yesterday and i have to go see them because they they sell on Monday. Yeah. And it's like crazy. my real estate agent's only available at certain times. I can only get in to see the house at certain times. And like, I usually like to go see it twice before I bid on it. Just because, you know, <laughs> isn't that crazy? Like, yeah. I thought when you're buying a house, you're like, yeah, I'll visit it like four times with like a bunch of different people to like really understand it. But no, in Toronto, it's like cool. Like, I'm sure some people buy them without even seeing them. But I try to go at least twice, hopefully bring somebody with me the second time I go see it whether it's a contractor or just like family member or something to kind of just like bounce ideas off of but Mm -hmm. it's crazy yeah no I think we only saw most of our houses once so I was like twice oh that's a lot of time (laughs) it's like once and you have to put your bid in (laughs) which is crazy but how did you like that one that you saw this morning was it nice um yeah so I actually saw three houses this morning um two of them were like already pretty good looking Um, And the problem with a house that is already renovated and looks pretty good is that if it's not exactly what I want, which is two income, two units, Mm -hmm. then it doesn't make sense for me to bid on it because a family is going to come along and they're going to be like, this house is perfect. We don't need to renovate it at all. Meanwhile, I'm like, cool, this house is good, but I'm still going to have to put in money. So that means that my bid is lower. Yeah, because it's probably worth more already because it's newly renovated, right? Yeah, exactly. And then I'm kind of like changing things around that are already done. So I learned today (laughs) after literally looking since March that I need to stop looking at homes that are like nice single family homes that are Mm -hmm. already completed. Right. Or that are completed in the basement too. Because I saw a house today that was like upstairs and main floor were one unit and then the basement was its own unit. Okay, does that not work though? No, because I don't need a three bedroom house. Like, okay. what am I going to do with three bedrooms? So I'm looking for, like, a one-bedroom apartment, essentially. Mm. So I'm trying to put, like, two one-bedroom apartments in a house. Right, I see. <laughs> yeah. Which so maybe it's a bit harder to find because it's quite specific. <laughs> yeah, so what I really am looking for, which I did see one of these today, was is a house that needs to be renovated. Mm-hmm. So I, I saw a single-family home today, but it totally needed to be renovated, which means that whether you're looking to make it two properties or looking to just have it as a single family home, either way, you're gonna need to put money into it, which means that I have a fighting chance. Right, exactly. So I think I'm gonna bid on that one, but we will see. I just never know. I've learned now not to get my <laughs> hopes up because. It's it's hard, it's really hard. Yeah, but when I do get it, it'll be amazing and um, there will probably be content about it, so. Oh, I'm excited. Lots of home reno stuff, especially if you do have to do a lot to it. That'll be so great. I know. I, like, I after I posted, we posted, like, last week's vlog where mm-hmm. I talked about, I think, for one of the first times about getting a house, and I showed pictures of a house that I bid on that I didn't get but had um, lots of renovations needed. Everybody was like, I need to see these renos. I want to see a reno series. And I'm like, okay, so now I have to buy a, a <laughs> fixer-upper for the content, but think about it well I always think too that like it's almost better that way because then you can make it exactly what you want 
I know. I've like seen houses and I'm like, this is nice, but this kitchen is like brand new and I hate it because yeah. it's just not my style. It's like too traditional or, you know, the black splash that's like, I'm going to like call people out, but it's like a bunch of like little pieces my and house? it's like shiny metallic. My house? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Does your house? No, yours is like more like stone, isn't it? Um ish okay not hating on veggie says <laughs> but no, but i was actually gonna like say like you wouldn't have chosen that would you have i do think about this this about my house sometimes too because this is a whole nother segue into not related to, <laughs> to what you were saying but sorry everybody. <laughs> <laughs> a while ago someone had reached out to us and was yeah. like we are looking for influencers that we can do like a kitchen makeover with mm -hmm. would you be interested in it was, i was in like a weird spot because like sure if I could redo my kitchen from the ground up, like I would do it entirely different. Yeah, it's not really. But from an your objective style. like point of view, it's a nice kitchen. Like it's great. And if I were to redo it, people might be like, "Why are you wasting money? You're throwing away good, good cabinets, like good countertops." Like, and I, f I feel bad about that. Like, yeah, just I was like, this, these are the things we have to think about. Is yeah, when that when that offer came through. And it made sense. Like, Becky's pretty much the only one we could do it with because they mm -hmm. want to, like, totally renovate a kitchen. And I don't have a home yet <laughs> to renovate a kitchen, and neither does anybody else. And they really wanted, like, either Becky or I because they wanted the influencer part mm -hmm. of it. Whatever. I hate that word. Cool. Moving on. Um, but, yeah, I was like, what, the, what are the comments going to be like if we're ripping out your kitchen? Even though your kitchen is, like, out of your entire house, it's probably the thing that's, like, maybe the least your style. Because it's the hardest thing to change. H hardest, most expensive. And, again, it is in perfect working condition. It's, like, like new, but mm -hmm. it's just such a kind of different style. Yeah. But, yeah, to rip it out, like, people probably just wouldn't understand. And I'm, like, we're going to get hate if we. Yeah, well, I said, like, we have to build in a storyline where, like, this is going to someone that needs a new kitchen. Yeah. Or, like, is renovating their house also and maybe doesn't have the money for, like, these nice like cabinets or yeah. something like that yeah like, i really needed that to be a part of it but didn't happen so maybe that's why because i was like pushing yeah. on those points but anyways that's what i'm wrapping this whole thing up to say is that sometimes it's nice to get a house that's more fixer upper because you can do it exactly how you want and you're not stuck with something that's like new but yeah not your style yeah paying for something that you don't necessarily like yeah exactly exactly yeah. Well, stay tuned for those uh, <laughs> house shopping stories because I go and see multiple houses a week and uh, it's always a roller coaster. This should just be a new segue on each week's podcast is how's the house search can go? Like, <laughs> we can talk about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that uh, this whole summer is going by so quickly, I mean, even just this whole year and maybe my entire life. Mm -hmm. No, not your whole life. I was just thinking back to summer and I was like, yeah, summer is so quick. Yeah, I think it's just because we're so busy. And I hate, mm. I think we've talked about this before, that that's a word we'd also see use, but that's just what I am. I know. I, I hate when I, there's so much going on that when someone asks me what I'm doing, like I, I can't think of one specific thing. I'm like, I'm just busy doing so many things. Okay, literally, like th this is our little sheet that our, our producers, Daniela and Claire, put together. <laughs> um, but it was like... What did it say? It was like, what did you do this week? I literally pulled up my calendar to be like, what did I do this week? Like, what happened? I know. And things feel like so much longer ago than they actually were. Like, Strayanne and Sarah feels like months ago, but it literally was last week. Last week. Yeah. What? It's crazy. But, yeah. I mean, it's, it's nice to have all these things, like, that you've done. It really feels like your summer is full. I mean, I, I don't know. I kind of like it. Like, in the moment, it's like, this is so much. I'm so stressed. How am I ever going to get any of this done? But then when you look back and you're like, wow, look at all the cool things that we did. It's yeah, cool. Yeah, it's a weird combination where, wow, you are so productive. Mm -hmm. You've done so much. You're so accomplished. Um, but at the other time, you're like, is there enough downtime? Like, am yeah. I, like, bringing it all in enough? Is life going by too fast? Am I focusing on the right things? Yeah. I think, yeah, it's, well, that's a good thing about how we try and stick to, like, a nine to five, and we do take weekends where, <laughs> like, hopefully you do have some breathing time. Yeah. And then I just need to remind myself to, like, be excited and grateful for all the things that I have done. So when people ask me, like, what did you do? Like, you should be excited to talk about the things that you've done. 
like too many times i'm like oh i was just so busy like let's not talk about me i'm like sick of talking about me you know what i mean yeah yeah yeah. what did you do but creates a podcast to talk about me i know i know (laughs) it's weird when you go meet people that like are friends in like the not online space and it's like a whole different thing and you're like wow i kind of just want to relax and not think about youtube right now yeah but it is useful to talk about like the things that you've done and it really makes you appreciate them especially when you meet people that like a lot of these things maybe don't feel like big deals in the mm-hmm. moment because it's so much going by so quickly. But then when you tell other people, they're like, wow, that's really cool. Then I go, oh, yeah, that is really cool. I should be proud of that. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I don't realize that it's it's cool. Like, I went to New York and stuff happened in Times Square. Like, I don't realize what's happening until I come home and I tell people about it. And they're like, that's wild. Yeah. So I think it's more just like, yeah, having that reflective moment so it doesn't feel like it happened and you forgot it. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. All right. Well, everybody, welcome back to season two. This has been exciting. Yeah. We'll dive into lots of other things. I think next episode we're going to talk about a bunch of firsts, mm-hmm. uh, which has a lot of different stories along with firsts. Yeah. We have a couple other segments, too, where we'll talk about different things. Um, plus, we might get to some emails. So if you guys want to mm. start off the new season by sending us in some emails, you can send it to podcast at the we always say that with a question mark and question look mark? at Daniela and then she's always like yep steal the same email and we're yep. like cool 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 that's right uh, so any thoughts you have any questions you have anything in response to this episode email us and we might respond to you next week yeah okay one thing before we go this is a segment that I don't know when we're gonna do it in the episodes but I'm gonna ask you mm-hmm. what was your either give me a favorite thing of the week or a favorite person Ooh. um Favorite thing this week, well, it was a long weekend, which is great. Um, (laughs) Favorite thing, long weekend. Long weekend, and we were up at Austin's Cottage, and we saw the most amazing sunset on the Sunday night. It was like the sky was so neon pink, which is a wild thing to see. And like, I don't know. I love stuff like that. It's so beautiful. Wow, that's beautiful and deep because my (laughs) answer is Google Drive. Hey, I mean. (laughs) My computer like decided it didn't want to work this week, so I had to bring it into the Apple store. And um, the only way I'm surviving right now is that everything is on Google Drive. And I'm like, we love the cloud. Mm-hmm. Bless cloud. So there you go. Nature and cl- clouds. The cloud. the cloud is like nature too. <laughs> wow. Wow. What a tie-in. <laughs> Double rainbow across the sky. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed our first episode back. Make sure you're subscribed where you listen to podcasts mm-hmm. or make sure you subscribe to The Story of Life where you can now catch podcasts. Yep. We will see you or talk at you <laughs> next week. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Bye.